What's up guys, so in today's video we are going to do a review of the Liberty Falls gameplay trailer stroke gameplay that we have seen at COD Next and oh boy is there a lot to talk about. So for this review I'm going to talk about both the positives and the negatives of the gameplay and let's just say there's not a lot of positives and there is more negatives unfortunately so let's just get straight into it. So let's jump into the positives. So the first positive of Liberty Forward is actually the jet gun. Now some people might be thinking hold on a minute the jet gun? The jet gun's a terrible weapon but they've actually changed it up a little bit. So the jet gun is actually going to be pack a punchable meaning you can upgrade it unlike transit for example and also it won't break it'll overheat but it won't actually break and that's a huge deal because when you play that use this gun in transit it could break so we've got a revolutionary change right here guys good job Treyarch and guess what guys we've got an exclusive enemy to this map that we've definitely not seen before and that is the Abomination and yes we have seen the Abomination before and to be fair it's pretty good that they've added that to the map and it's not on Terminus but this is the only exclusive um, enemy that's on the map and we're going to discuss that a bit more uh, later of course but it is pretty good that it's there to be fair changes it up that just that little bit just that little little bit and my next point and this is probably the most important point in terms of the positives it actually looks like a decent casual experience now i know it's not got the crazy zombie atmosphere even though that would be very helpful of course again that'll be discussed later in the video but in the grand scheme of things, it does look very simple to just jump into and have a fun time with your friends. Looks like it's going to be one of those maps you can easily just get to the high rounds on or get the camos, etc. And Treyarch did exclusively say this would be more of a casual experience, which we all kind of knew, I guess, to an extent. They did make it kind of clear. But um, that's good in a way because that means people that are new to the mode can jump into it without fear of getting lost and confused. It's just an easy jump in the game, shoot some zombies, job done. And to be fair, it does that well from what I can see on these gameplay trailers and gameplays I've seen. And my final positive is actually to do with the traps. And this trap with the whole superhero lady in the comic book store, I think it is, with, um, with the laser beam thing, looks pretty cool. Traps look alright. Um, not much else to say really other than the good job on the trap, Treyarch. You're doing great. Now let's move on to the negative side because you probably already feel this way a lot more compared to the positives anyway. I just wanted to get them out of the way to show that there is a little bit of positivity in this map. But we need to cover these negatives as well. Let's point out the elephant in the room and that is the fact that this literally is a multiplayer map. It not only looks like a multiplayer map, it is a multiplayer map and that's not great in my opinion. Now I know they've said it's a casual experience, it's going to be a small map, blah de blah de blah, what the, what the, that's what they said anyway. But the problem with that is is it's not really fair on the zombies community because why should multiplayer get all these maps and then zombies get like one map that looks like zombies and Liberty Falls which is already a multiplayer map. It isn't great, it seems a little bit lazy. I mean, if they were going for a smaller zombies map, they could have at least just sort of made a smaller zombies map. They could have made the zombie map look atmospheric. They could have even added some fire or some lava into it to make it less multiplayer like. But the fact that it literally is a multiplayer map and they've probably just chucked some zombies on there, moved a few things around and made it a little bit bigger maybe. It isn't looking good, it really isn't, and I'm really disappointed that Treyarch chose to do that. And you know I mentioned zombie bosses before, how we had the Abomination being exclusive to the map? Well, yeah, that's kind of where it ends, because they've kind of reused the other zombie bosses, so they've got the Mangler, the Spiders, the Parasites all back in the map. And I'm a bit like, why? They don't even fit the map properly. Like, spiders and parasites just don't look right in this map. There's no atmosphere to represent them being there. It's just a daytime map and there's just flying things everywhere. There's n They don't feel scary. They don't add any value to the map. It's just weird. It's like they're just shoved in there for the sake of it. And they've done a really bad job with that. They, sh they could have had added anything, just something else, other just anything new. I mean, they added the Abomination, but they should have added a bit more to it as well. They didn't need to put the Parasite. If anything, they might have been better without, because they just don't fit the map well. It's just a horrible, horrible concept. I don't know why they've done that. My next point is is they um, spent four years in this Call of Duty game. Now, some people might say, oh, we knew it was going to be a casual experience. We knew this, we knew that. But 
they have had four years. This is the most development time a Call of Duty game has ever, ever had in its history as far as I'm aware. So for me personally, the fact that they've developed one zombie map, which looks absolutely fantastic, I can't wait to play Terminus, but then they've got Liberty Falls, which is not so great. I mean, we've had things like this in the past, like we've had the Giant in Shadows of Evil, and the Giant was a casual experience, yes, don't get me wrong, but it felt more like zombies, and people say it's reused to Reese, but again, it felt more, more like zombies. And the fact with Liberty Falls, it just sort of got more player map, put some zombies in there, added a few little things, job done. It's like they did it very quickly, and there's no way. I mean, I know I know Termis Island is a very big and expansive map, but there's no way that took four years to develop and they couldn't come with anything better than Liberty Falls. I would have been much rather have a remake of Buddy the Rook for crying out loud, because at least that looks more zombie-like. This is just not not good. It's not good at all. People have got to remember as well that people are paying money for this, people have got Game Pass subscriptions, people have got um, people are paying for the deluxe edition and for them to get a zombie map that's very mediocre and half arse like this in the four years development time is an insult to the consumer in my opinion. Some people may disagree with that but I genuinely feel this way overall. And weirdly enough, there's actually one part of the map that looks zombie-like, and that is the Pack-a-Punch, but that's it, and it's just a little church area. If the whole zombie map, or at least a good portion of it, had this dark ether aesthetic, maybe we'll get more of the easter egg, I hope we bloody do, because if we don't, we're in serious trouble, folks. So the map looks, at, it looks, in the church, it's like, I can't even describe it, it looks really cool, it's like dark ether, like I just mentioned. But then, like, the rest of the map's just sunshine and roses. Like, there's not an apocalypse. It's like everyday life, almost. It's just a bit dead and flat. It's not looking too great. And it's not... It's not. It's just weird how they've chosen the Pack-a-Punch of all areas to look cool and the rest of the map to look crap. Makes no sense. Right, up next is my main point with this map. My big, big, big thing that really wires me up. And that is the way they market it. So, they kept this map a secret, more or less, or, very, or they, didn't give you much, they didn't give us much information other than they said it was going to be a casual experience. And when you do things like that, the consumer's going to get hyped up naturally because they think, why are they hiding it? What's going on? Duh, 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 duh. And then they show us the gameplay and release trailers and all the rest of it from all these YouTubers and stuff, and you go... I've just been hyped up for this because Terminus was fantastic. They really hyped that up. It looks amazing and all the rest of it. Then the key Liberty Falls a secret, L literally a secret. Everything was a secret apart from like a little bit of a teaser, which the and they made the teaser look really cool as well. The teaser looks cooler than the actual trailer does. It's bizarre. And when you when when you do that to a consumer, they're going to ex have high expectations and actually be keeping it a secret. And then you hype it up to be this massive thing almost when it really isn't. And I know I keep saying they say casual experience, but they're probably expecting a casual experience with a bit of a zombie atmosphere to it and the map looking half decent and not just some thrown together multiplayer map. It's simple as that. The marketing team have done a terrible job. They've really let the player base down. Also, when it comes to Liberty Falls, it does look bit too easy and I mean I know it's a casual map but it looks easy to the point of like you have to be pretty stupid not to like know how to do anything it's unbelievable like the open space is looking like you can train literally anywhere on the map give or take and there's probably loads of places to camp as well maybe it does get harder in the higher hours I've got no clue but from what I'm seeing it's a bit too casual to the point where there's like no challenge to it and that may turn people off. It might be a good thing, but it might also be a bad thing. And I know I said it's a good thing as well, but it's also a negative at the same time because if it's too easy, people might go, well, this is a bit boring, no challenge, and never play the map again. I hope that this is the only map in Black Ops 6 Zombies that um, is this easy and um, is this source. Because if this is what's going to be like for the rest of the DLC season, we've got a problem. And I'm hoping Terminus Island is the standard that we get for each map because, you know what, that, I think that's what we deserve after four years of waiting. And last but not least is... There's no set crew, and that is a very, very big problem because in the when they were reviewing Black Ops 6 about a couple of months ago, I think it was now, they were saying, oh, there's a set crew back in Zombies, so this is going to be the best thing ever, and they haven't got one in this map. And they did say this is the only map without a set crew, but they also advertised that there's always going to be a set crew in Zombies, more or less. And they could have easily done a set crew. They could, like... They, they, Blanchard's like the main talk, the guy that talks in the map, I think, from what I've seen, like, he sort of like, he sort of guides it's a bit like Cold War, well, it is Cold War, so that's, that's, that's how it's functioning, right? And what really wires me up is why didn't the members of his security team become the crew? Why does it have to be operators? They could have had a bit of a story about them where the security team go on the operation, they all die at the end, or there's some kind of emotional story between the families and 
all the rest of it. They could have done something more articulate, more interesting, but no, they just sort of went, right guys, um, we're just going to put the operators in the map, um, job done, no character development whatsoever. And that's really a shame. I mean, I'm hoping the Easter egg that they do, but the advertised Rick's often in the map, man. And, and I knew he wasn't going to be in the map because of the storyline, but a lot of people would have been hyped up thinking he was going to be playable. I mean, I'm assuming the Easter egg's to free him or something, but... The way they set it up was wrong, they, they, they made the story trail look amazing, they've hyped it up way too much and with no set crew on top of it, it's probably deflated a lot of people. And I'm not saying Black Ops 6 Zombies is going to be bad, I'm really not. I think Tervis looks good and I'm looking forward to playing it and uh, I, I'm quite excited for that. But the fact that we've been waiting for four years, people spend a lot of money on these games and you get a map like Liberty Falls, it's a bit like half-baked and unfair on the consumer on so many levels. and. This needs to change because I feel like people pay so much money in these games. People working really hard. There's cost of living crisis all over the world. And when you get um, half-baked games like this, whether it's a COD Zombies game or the newest FIFA game, it's called FC now, and they just sort of shove it all together, charge you 70, 80 pounds or dollars or whatever. It's not fair. Like People, people work to play these games and if you're not going to deliver on what you promise, I just don't think it's right. I really don't think it's right. But anyway guys, that is it for today's video there, my thoughts and feelings, not only on the on that game, but on that map, but it seems to be on the whole industry as a whole. Uh, but don't forget to like, comment and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.